Have you ever been in a lesson and your teacher shares this dreaded bit of advice, you have to slow down to speed up? <sighs> I know it doesn't feel good. It feels frustrating when you've been working on this goal for so long and all of a sudden you feel like you have to take two steps back in order to take one step forward. You may be feeling behind, overwhelmed, frustrated, all the things. Now, this video is not going to tell you to not take this advice because if we're being honest, it is a pretty dang useful strategy for overcoming a roadblock in your fiddling. We're going to instead make a plan so that you get through what feels like a setback and we're gonna turn it into a strategy to help you blow past the next milestone in your Irish fiddle journey. If you're ready to make this plan with me and you want to see other tutorials like this one, make sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so that you get notified every time I post a new Irish fiddle tip video. My name is Hannah Harris and I'm an Irish fiddle teacher who is all about helping you get the real feel for Irish fiddling and part of that comes when you are very, very effective and intentional in your practice sessions. Today we're going to look at two case studies where you may be told to slow down in order to speed up and I'm going to talk you through the process that I use with my own students and even in my own musical practice for my own playing that I use for getting out of a slump here. So case number one, you're not loving the tone you're producing from your instrument. It might sound sloppy or scratchy or just not what you're looking for. Continuing to play the way that you have been playing is not going to solve the problem here. We have to take a step back and assess what's going on. Ask yourself questions like, am I using too much bow? Where is my bow contacting with the string? And what angle is my bow hitting the string at? Now this is going to look a bit different for everybody, but I'm going to go ahead and share my best practices here for getting the best tone out of your fiddle. So if we're going to look at placement, we have five different lanes that we're working with on the fiddle. So we've got one, lane one, right over the bridge, lane two, lane three, right in the middle between the bridge and the fingerboard, lane four, lane five is all the way over the fingerboard. So for Irish fiddling, I typically recommend staying in lane three, right in the middle, or lane four. So you want to be roughly in this area. It's just a more subtle part of the instrument. It's not super loud, but it's also not super wispy sounding. So let's just play a couple of notes here. Right in the middle, to the side. So you will typically see me in videos playing both in the middle and about right here for getting the best contact point with your fiddle. Now, as far as how much bow you should be using, I'm going to hazard a guess that you could get away with using less. Now, you don't have to be using just this tiny little amount, but you probably don't need to be using as much as you are, and you can also use less bow without sacrificing volume. So I'll show you what I mean here. So narrowing in your bow window really allows you to play with less sloppy techniques. So it tightens up the window. You can use a visual cue, like maybe two bits of yarn that you tie to your bow stick, and you can use that to remind yourself to stay within those parameters there. And that way you're not using all this bow and you're feeling like you have to play super fast and it just sounds really, really, again, sloppy and not put together. So just to tighten it up and get that really nice tone, try using a little bit less bow. Again, you don't have to go as extreme as using like an inch of bow, but I would say aim for maybe about, I don't know what this is, maybe four or five inches of the bow. still get all the volume that you need from that amount of bow and it really is helpful especially for the faster dance tunes like reels, jigs, and you know a polka or two as well um, just to tighten up that window. And the last thing you can look at with tone here is your bow angle. So some people want to play with the hair coming straight down onto the string so you can see that my stick here is pretty much running parallel to the string or you might want to tilt it a little bit. So I tend to tilt my bow and sometimes if I feel like it's just a little bit too wispy or I want to get a bit more sound, I'll go ahead and straighten the bow out as I'm playing. So I kind of alternate between both of these, but you can pick one or the other too. So you could tilt the stick out a little bit away from you. So you're playing on an angle of the bow. Now there are some people I think who move the stick in towards them. For me, that's just really not comfortable, but I 
and there's plenty of other ways to play the fiddle apart from how I do it. So you can always try that angle as well to see if that's better for you. But typically I will recommend either straight on to the string or at a little bit of an angle. So this is the assessment part of figuring out why you don't like your tone. Figure out what it is your bow is doing, really, really get specific and look at angle, placement, parameter, check out those factors. You can play in a mirror if you need to, just to uh, see what you're doing and really, really get curious about this because you can play around with all these different ways of playing the fiddle, maybe with more bow, maybe with a little bit less bow, trying the different angles, trying the different lanes that you can play in, and you're going to find that there's a difference in the tone. So what I want you to do once you have spent a couple practice sessions on this, maybe even a week long practice, just trying to figure out what's going on, figure out which combination of these you like the best, and then find a way to make sure that you remember that. This could look like writing yourself a sticky note reminder and putting it on your case or on your bathroom mirror. You can take an audio of you playing and maybe have some notes as well as like, okay, this is what I'm doing right now. This is with the angle straight on. This is with it to the side. You could also take a video of yourself so that you can see what it is you're doing. Or maybe you need to draw yourself a little diagram. Maybe you have a system in your head that if I look at this squiggly line here, it's going to remind me to do this technique with my bow. So basically, in order to get out of this slump of not liking your tone on your fiddle, you've got to take a couple of practice sessions at least, just sit down, get curious about what's going on, diagnose yourself with the different areas of tone production with your bow, and then remember what it is that you like about the different combinations. Speaking of visual versus audio learning, I'm curious, how do you learn best? Does information stick better for you when you watch someone play a tune, when you listen to a tune over and over again, maybe when you write out the tune yourself, try transcribing it, or when you actually just have your instrument and you're getting the notes under your fingers, getting the muscle memory? I'm curious, all four of those strategies work for learning Irish fiddle, but which one is the most effective for you? Let me know in the comments. Okay, so that was case number one. Moving on to case number two, you figured out all the different ornaments that you can add to your Irish fiddling and you've started applying them. And if you haven't figured them out, I do have another YouTube video on that, which I'll link in the description below. So you actually know all of the ornaments now, but trying to actually fit them into the tune without messing up the rhythm and the phrasing is proving to be a challenge. So what do we do? we slow it down. You're either going to need more practice on the ornaments themselves and getting the technique really easily under your fingers, or you're going to need to revisit the rhythm of the tunes and how to play with good rhythm for a reel, for a jig, a hornpipe, etc, etc. To test this, set up a metronome to move at a pace where you can comfortably play the tune or even a bit slower and take all of the ornaments out. So I like to use just a Google metronome here. I'm going to adjust my pace to about 90 BPM for a jig. You might need to go faster or slower and let's see what happens. So we're going to take a jig here and just take all of the ornaments out. <laughs> Play your tune a few times and if you find that as you're looping it, as it's continuing to be like, okay, I know how the tune goes now, you start to maybe naturally add in a couple of ornaments. Maybe it's just one note, so it's like a cut or a flick or a slide. Let's see how that sounds. <laughs> Right, and now we're going to take that one more time and we're going to try adding in rolls. So we're ornamenting with more than just one finger here. So see how that feels when you're playing the role in your tune now. Does it feel like you're tripping over the notes of the role? Do you feel like you're not super comfortable playing it at that speed, but you feel that the tune itself actually feels pretty comfortable? So if that's the case, you might want to isolate the role itself and practice that finger pattern now. I know you've heard this sort of advice a lot, but scales really are a very good way to remember the role pattern. So let's just take a D major scale here. So 
So you're playing. Speeding that up. Eventually speeding it up. So it's a great practice for getting the movement pattern of the roll under your fingers. If the rolls are feeling good and you feel that you can comfortably play at that pace, but as you start to increase the speed, then things start to fall apart a little bit with the rhythm, then go ahead and stay at that speed or go a little bit lower and play at a pace where you feel comfortable fitting both the roll in without losing your rhythm. So just as a demonstration, we're here at 90 BPM. Let's say that my rolls aren't feeling comfortable. I'll move my little toggle down here to 85 BPM and let's try that. Make a point to spend at least 10 minutes per practice just working on this one tune with the ornaments and the speed. So you can increase the speed over time and the more you play it, the more muscle memory you're going to build so that you will get the correct timing as you're increasing the speed as well. And if you're just feeling really frustrated and you find that you can't play a roll up to speed just yet, consider putting a cut or a triplet in there if you are playing it out in public at a session. Of course, with your practicing, you can still work on developing the roll, but just when you absolutely have to play it in time with other people, you can consider just throwing in another ornament. So let's demo that. <laughs> in my strength training routine recently. I've been building up strength to do pull-ups, but was still below the recommended target of reps on the band-assisted pull-ups. So to build the back muscle that will allow me to do these reps properly and increase over time, I went back a step in the progression to use a box to assist me in getting over the bar, so a slightly easier exercise than the one I was doing before. Now I'm much closer to hitting the recommended rep range, and we're talking like weeks here rather than months, and I'm still building muscle so that when I go back to the band assists and a regular pull-up, I'll be in much better shape for success than I was at the start. So in the case of my pull-ups and your ornaments here, we're still having fun. You're still adding an ornament, I'm still doing an exercise, and we're building that muscle memory, we're building that strength from there. and it's going to enable you to continue to make progress over time. Even if it's not the exact movement that you're wanting to do at that time, you're still making progress, you're still getting to be part of the group and making music together. So going out and being a part of that community and having this willingness to keep learning, always embracing being a learner to some degree, that is going to be a key part in improving your Irish fiddling over time. It really will help you become a better player. It's why every Sunday I send out an email to fellow fiddlers like you who are excited to take a deep dive into the world of Irish fiddle and really discuss how to go about getting the real feel for traditional music. We chat about things like bowing, the benefits, pros and cons of using sheet music, learning another instrument within the tradition, and much, much more. You can join this list at the link below in the description. It's completely free. And as a thank you for your time and attention, you'll also get immediate access to my Fiddle Tip Vault when you sign up for the list. So check out that link below to keep this conversation going. And if you choose to subscribe from this video, I'd be curious, send me a little code phrase. Let's go with pull-ups. So if you put pull-ups in your response to the first email you get from me, then I will know that you are dedicated to learning Irish fiddle, you're okay with slowing down to speed up, and I will be cheering you on from the other side of the inbox. If you liked this video, please do hit that like button so I can reach and serve more aspiring Irish fiddlers out there in the world. You may also be interested in this video where I talk more about adding ornaments to your tunes. And as always, I appreciate you and your dedication to improving your Irish fiddle skills. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.